often in JavaScript applications, you might come across a need where you don't want to leave a page uh, when you have made some changes to your form input fields. So as long as form input fields have been modified, you want to stay on the page. So today, let's take a look at how we detect changes in your form fields first, and then secondly, how to prevent uh, page navigation or the page from unloading. And for this, we will use sweat stores and actions. So this is a uh, request that came from one of our uh, YouTube channel subscribers. Uh, she had a survey type uh, application and she was asking how can she make sure that the survey is fully saved before allowing uh, navigation. So the user could click on one of the nav navigation links and then just click away and that would unload the page. Uh, also the user could hit reload. And so what she wanted to do was detect that the form has been modified and if it has been modified and not yet saved or hit reset, in that case, prevent the user from uh, unloading the page. So let's see how we will achieve that using sweat stores and actions. So let me first create my, uh, my application. I'm going to use a snowpack. So if you haven't used snowpack, this would be a quick uh, way for you to uh, learn snowpack. So you install the create snowpack app. Uh, you could all run it using npx. But I already have create snowpack app installed. So create snowpack app. This is the name of the directory in which it will be created. Unsaved input prevent navigation. So that's a decent name for what we are trying to do. When the input fields are unsaved, then prevent navigation. And then we are using a template called snowpack slash app template swelt. Then I, I like to use yarn rather than uh, npm. So that's what I'll do. Press enter. Once that finishes, we will open the project. All right, ready. Let's open the project. Okay. All right, so once that is done, let's hit start. Okay, so that's my, uh, all right, let's ignore these things. But this is the Snowpack application, all right, uh, out of the box. Okay, so let's uh, go and I'm just going to clear everything out, everything. Okay. Delete. Okay. Once I save that, everything is blank. Uh, let me put these two side by side. Oops, did it work? Yeah. Okay. Browser window that is not there. Okay. So, first let's figure out how to detect changes in uh, the input fields. So, let's create a simple, uh, we, could, we could start with a form, uh, but we don't really need a form in Ajax application, single page applications. You may or may not have a form. So, let's make it more generic by using a div. Okay then we'll call it div wrapper. So I'm using, uh, you know, emit coding. In there, let's put input, text area, and select different types of, and maybe, a, a, yeah, so let's put an input, a text area. 
area a select with options will will put and then finally a button and a button okay so input type text text area we don't want name or columns or anything and in the text area just put some some text we have an a select tag and in the select tag we will put a couple of options so let's just say option no value just option will be option 1 and option 2 okay finally we have buttons so one will be the save button the other is a reset button something like that okay so if i save it as you can see this is what my form looks like but let's style it a, just a little bit i'm going to use flexbox to style it uh, so style Div ID wrapper, I guess wrapper. Make it display flex display. I made it display flex. As soon as I did that, they uh, they became same size. But I want them to be in a single column. So we'll say flex direction. that will be column so now they are all one above the other let's give some a little bit of uh, wrapper and let's give some spacing between them if i say immediate child any any of immediate child should have a margin bottom of let's say 1 em now I got some spacing between them. So pretty quickly uh, we are able to get some uh, styling. Let's, uh, let's add some padding also. Not padding, sorry. Margin on the margin on the side. So let's do this margin top and bottom is 0 0.5 and the sides are also Okay, let's leave it at that. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to detect any changes. Let's do that. Any kind of changes we want to get. Uh, now, let's add a script and we say function uh, detect change. And it takes an event, and it doesn't really matter if it, we, we're not doing anything with the event, are we? Not really. So, and all we want to do is unsave is equal to true. So we start with a value of unsaved equals to false, so we are not unsaved. But as soon as the change is detected, we are unsaved equal to Now, in order to detect, you could uh, just say on change. If you want to wait till the user tabs out of the field, then you use on change, or you can use on input, in which case, as soon as the first keystroke happens, uh, the event fires. So you could say on input um, detect change, right? So you could do it like this. Then you apply it to each one of them separately, like 
So you could do it, do, do it this way and it will work. But guess what? There is a better way. You don't really have to do it at each input level. You can do this at the wrapper level here. You can do it at this level. What happens is uh, because of event bubbling, if, it, if an input event is triggered on this input box or text area or select or any of these, the on input uh, that event will eventually bubble up to its parent which is this uh, div and that's why you can just put it at the parent level. So let's save it, put it there. And whenever that happens, uh, let's also print this, uh, show display this on the page and say unsave is equal to whatever is the value of save. Okay, so unsaved is false. As soon as I start typing into it, unsaved becomes true. See that? Um, now, on save and reset, we want to set unsaved back to false, right? So you say on click of save. We will say unsaved is equal to false. Save that. Same thing here. Because save and reset eventually do the same thing, which is to put this form back into its original condition, right? So now, if I start typing, unsaved is true, but if I reset, unsaved becomes false. If I type more and hit save, unsaved is false. So now we are able to, so this is, so that was step number one, which is detecting that some change has occurred to the form input field. That's part one. Now part two is, to prevent navigation. So let's do that. So in order to prevent navigation, we have to capture uh, the unload event. And also we have to capture, so yeah, so if we are uh, capturing the unload event, plus we can also capture any click on any uh, hyperlinks on the page. So what we could do is we can, uh, first capture all the hyperlinks. So let's put some hyperlinks. I'm going to say uh, UL, LI, right? And let's say A. Okay, let's put an ahref to spitfire.com and then let's link this by page. Okay. So now I have a link here. I can click on it and it takes me to spitfire.com. Now, what I want to do is, uh, if unsaved is true, then I don't want the navigation to happen. So, I can just uh, I can say document dot grab all the a href so query selector all. And then find every A that has an href on it. Okay. And now we can say we can do a dot for each, or another way is to say for let A off. Okay, so now we are saying for A A let A off all these results. And then we can add a uh, the link that is dot add event listener capture the click event and then you you can say check checking uh, we have to write some we we'll write function check navigation text event and if unsaved then e dot prevent the 
don't allow it and everything. Simple. So there are, there are there are some bugs here. First of all, we want to do this capturing only when on attaching and then on detaching we want to want to remove the event so let's convert this into a um, into an action so now i hope you are familiar with swelt actions so swelt actions are basically function <coughs> that get called when uh, when a dom element is mounted into the dom so uh, let's create a function called function I'll just call it my action. I'll come up with a better name. Okay. So this is my my action. And I'm going to move all of this code into the my action. And I will no longer the unsaved value. Let me just move that out in so that we can use the then instead of on input, I, I basically use use the action. So use colon the action name, which is my action, and it will call. Now what we have to do is my action receives a DOM node and a bunch of parameters. We are not going to use parameters. So we will simply add, take the uh, node and add event listener on the node and the event that we are interested is in is input event and then the handler is listener change okay so let me move this down a bit so when the action is attaching it will do these two things it will uh, detect change to input event on the div or form whichever that might be and uh, we are also kept trying to capture document ahref all the links on the document and if anybody clicks on them we want to uh, check for navigation if, if unsaved is true then we don't allow navigation okay all right so let's uh, let's see if this works let me go to my browser Fresh. Okay, so if I start typing, unsaved became true. That's good. If I hit save, unsaved becomes false. If I type more, unsaved is true. If I hit re reset, unsaved is, is uh, false. And now I type more, and unsaved is true. true. If I click on this link, it did not allow did not take me to splinspire.com. That's because the check navigation checked for unsaved, which was true, and then it prevented the navigation. So this is, we are getting somewhere now. It's already having the effect. But there are some problems. I mean, our, our action is incorrect. It is attaching the event handler, but it, it is never removing them. So it so happens that uh, actions have a method for cleaning up after up after themselves once the hmm. so when uh, so when actions detach you can they can uh, give a, a destroy callback so what you have to do is from the action you have to return an object in which there is a destroy method and in destroy method you do the exact opposite of what you the event handlers that you attach so i'm just going to copy these and then Instead of add event hand uh, listener, I'm just going to remove event handler. So yeah, so this is the opposite of so to be very exact, I should probably do it, but there is a problem. Okay, so this is this is more technically correct. So uh, one thing that is missing is it is preventing us like see since everything is unsaved, unsaved is true. If I save. Now, if I click on this, it allows me to navigate, which is good. 
unsaved is false, right? But if unsaved is true, then I click on it. It doesn't let me go to spinspire.com, which is good, except that this, from a user, this is not good user experience. Um, the user needs to be told something that, hey, we are not going to let you navigate because your input fields are unsaved. So let's add an alert or a message of some sort. So when we are doing the check navigation and we are going to prevent the default. Uh, I will say prevent default and then let's add an alert. Alert saying, well, instead of alert, let's ask for a confirmation. So if I, if I'm saved and then ask for a confirmation, hit confirm. And let's give a message is, are you sure, question mark. And then if they hit say okay, then we don't want to prevent. But if they say cancel, then we do want to prevent. So therefore, I reverse the flag. So if no, no confirm, meaning say they click on cancel, then prevent default, prevent navigation, right? So I, let's see if this works. So uh, let me first reload and save this false. I make in some kind of a change to the form. Now and save this true. I click on the button. It says, are you sure? So if I say OK, it will let me go. If I say cancel, it should not let me go. Yeah, it didn't let me go. If I click again and I say OK this time, it allows me to navigate. So this is exactly the behavior we were. So at this point, we, we got everything, almost everything working. Now, there are some problems. Um, at this point, uh, even if unsaved is true, if I hit reload, it still allows me to reload. So that's something I need to fix. But before I do that, there are some other things that I should do. Right now, this thing is not very self-contained. It's not very easy to use. So what I will do is I will move this into its own file. I create a new file called, um, I don't know, unsaved input prevent navigate.jsx. Okay, little long name, but still. Uh, so I want to move all of this out. Okay, so go to this. JS. Now I want to. What I want to do is I want in, because the as soon as I move things out, I no longer have access to this unsaved variable. I want to turn this unsaved variable into a store. Why do I want to convert anything into a Svelte store? You use Svelte stores whenever you want a decoupling between two pieces of code, and yet you want communication. You want them to share data. So that's what stores are for. So let me do import of store from Svelte store. I'll try to get writable. So writable will allow me to create a store. And let's create a function that combines it. A function that returns a store and it also returns a uh, an action. So let's first uh, what's called the unsaved is the is the store, right? So I say const unsaved is equal to writable false, right? So it's it becomes a store. Okay. So wherever I was using unsaved, instead of assigning it, remember this is the store, right? So instead of uh, assigning it. Well, true directly, I have to say unsaved set true because this is no longer a regular variable, it's a store. So let me just see where else. Okay. So when I'm reading the value of unsaved, instead of reading the store, I have to use the get function. So the get function comes from the same module. I'll import that. And the 
any other place where I'm using unsaved, this is it. These are the places where I'm using unsaved. Now I want to return the action. Uh, I don't want to call it my action. I think I should probably call it something else. Let's call it um, let's call it form action, I guess, because it usually is applied to forms, right? So let me just rename this to form action. Let's call it form action. Maybe there is a better name for it. Um, wonder what I should call it. Um, yeah, I could just, yeah, let's, let's see what happens. Um, this is my action. The action uses the, the store that is in the outer scope. Let's wrap this whole thing, everything into a function. So let's call it function. Um, create the absence of a better name, let's call it that. Um, okay, so I'm going to move all of this into the create action and store. So now I have function create action and store, right? And it should return these two things, the, the unsaved store and form action. So in order to return that, I have to return as an object, unsaved store that is, and then form action. So that's what we are returning from this function. We come back here and we import import from unsaved input prevent navigation. We are so this the we are importing the default. And that will be, we could call it create action. Oh, sorry, we are not exporting. We need to export this. So back in here, we have to say export default this function. So we come back here and now uh, create, what was it called? Create action and store. Create action and store. By the way, the import, during the import, you can give it any name you feel like. Okay, so now let's call this create action and store and it returns, like I said, two things. It returns the unsaved object uh, store and the form action. So let's, uh, when we are going to use this unsaved store, we have to put dollar sign in front of it. And when we are assigning it values, let's just put dollar sign. So this way stores value is read and updated. And then the action, instead of my action, I have to call it form action. And the great thing is this form action is already coupled with this unsaved thanks to this create action and store function. So these two are already married to each other. All right, now that everything is has been wired, let's see if this actually works. Let me go to our reload. Okay, so unsaved is false. As soon as I start typing into it, unsaved becomes true. Good. If I hit save, unsaved is false again. If I type into this again, unsaved is true. If I hit reset, unsaved is false again. So everything works. If I try to navigate at this point, it allows me to navigate. If I come back, and then I once again make make it unsaved, true, and now I click on this. It says, "Are you sure?" I, if I say cancel, it keeps me on this page. If I hit again and click OK, it allows me to go ahead. Good. Now I was saying there is one problem, which is a reload. It still allows a reload. So let's fix that. All we have to do is go into the code. And there's one event that we have to capture, which is a window. Yeah, so window dot add event listener before unload. This is the uh, 
have this is the event that occurs when you are leaving the page and completely unloading it or refreshing it for that matter. So let's add event listener for before unload, but then let's also detach that event. the destroy method okay. by the way all of this code will be available to you so uh, don't worry about losing this code okay and you can check the the video video description okay so this thing is not going to work automatically you'll see there is there is a little bit of a challenge there so i have attached this let me reload all good. I make the form dirty. If I hit refresh, it still refreshes. The reason being, it requires one more thing, which is if the e, so in our check navigation, we can check for e dot type, which will be before unload. In case of uh, of Chrome. And this is something I just uh, read in the documentation. You have to say e dot return value is equal to blank string. I'm not totally sure why it is. It, it has to be exactly this, but that's what it has to be. So once I do that, and if I refresh, make the form unsaved, hit the refresh. working. Let's see why is that. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll see. Uh, if before unload, am I capturing everything correctly? Window, let's add event listener. So, oh, this is an opportunity for us to debug. Let's debug. Okay. Let's back. Back to front. And let's go into. Remember, I'm using a snowpack. So let's go to sources. And this here is unsaved. It's good. Okay, good. Uh, Let's uh, do check navigation is right there. Let's put a breakpoint here. Okay. I make I refresh. I make some changes. And hit refresh. Well, there is no. <laughs> All right. Let me read. trying to figure out why get unsaved It's not actually showing the path for the window that had event listener. Is it even attaching that check thing? Let's go back here. And window that had event listener, I'm sure I have it. Make sure this is. Yeah, so it is. 
calling these four manifolds. Where is the text? <laughs> okay, yes, that's my problem. I shouldn't, I, I didn't mean to do the text change, I meant check navigation. My bad. So, some of you are probably watching and laughing at me in that if you're making such basic mistakes. My bad, my bad. So, Yes, I wanted to use check navigation, not the text change. My bad. So let's save this. Let's remove this. Okay. In fact, let's close this. And full refresh. Okay. So now we are back on track. We type and save this true. If I hit refresh, do you see this? Reload site changes you made may not be saved. You say cancel and it doesn't reload if you do it again and then hit allow that to reload then reload happens. So, this is finally the correct behavior. Now, there is a third way in which things can uh, navigate away which is this forward button. Okay. So, back and forward in case of actual unloading and full refresh this is working leave side changes you may made may not be saved because this is the before unload happening, right. So, th that part works. What does not work is SPA routing, single page application routing. Uh, things that you accomplish using the history API and, and history dot push state. That is a bit tricky. So, today uh, what in the video what we saw was uh, we are okay. So what we saw was um, how to detect unsaved form fields, think form fields that have been modified. Um, then we also checked how to prevent page from unloading, navigation from ha happening, uh, and the hyperlink click from allowing navigation and we did that using stores and actions, 12 stores and actions. Um, all of this code will be linked in the video description. So, if you have similar questions or similar problems to solve, uh, feel free to add that in the video comments and I will try my best to create videos addressing your, your challenge. Now, um, if you have specific business inquiries, like I said, you can always reach me uh, at info at springspire.com. I hope you are enjoying these videos. Uh, I would like you guys to participate more, ask questions, uh, tell me all the situations in which you might be using this. Okay. So, I will see you in the next video.